Have you ever shied away from a compliment? You just kind of like brush it off. Do you feel the need when someone compliments you or says something good about your writing to qualify? Do you need to add something like, well, I am an aspiring author or say, well, it's not that good or basically try and set people's expectations so that they aren't too high. Do you use the word just a lot? It's just a story I wrote. Oh, it's just a thing I did. If that's you, take a seat, get comfy, relax, and let's go through this together. And hopefully by the end of this video, you might see your writing in a brighter light with a bit more appreciation for your own effort. You published a book, but you self-published it. Doesn't that mean it's not published? People are buying it and enjoying it, but you have to discount it to 99 cents to sell, sell copies. And you're deeply in debt for editing. It won an award, but maybe it was, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe, maybe everyone who submitted was just really, really bad. Imposter syndrome. It's something that you may have heard of, or you may know intimately because it's something that you deal with. It could be a feeling you are aware of, but something that you haven't heard named yet. In this video, we're going to talk about it and specifically how it can be very detrimental to writers and how I do my best to manage it. Writers can be especially susceptible to imposter syndrome, and it can cause a lot of issues. There are just so many parts to writing, from grammar to story to marketing to every single thing that you are gonna have to do to be a successful author. Even the term author is a loaded word for many of us. I, for one, was deep into my second book before I started actually calling myself an author. We often as writers will look at other work and think, hey, you know, it's that book is too good. I'm never going to be able to measure up to that. Why would I even try? But let's first describe exactly what imposter syndrome is. Imposter syndrome is a psychological occurrence in which the individual doubts their skills, talents or accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Despite external evidence of their competence, those experiencing this phenomenon do not believe they deserve their success or luck. Sound familiar? If it does sound familiar, why not go ahead and, and hit that like button so I can get some of my necessary external validation to banish some of my own imposter syndrome. This feeling of being a fraud or that you're not good enough it's something that I've come to see as being really actually pretty widespread. When I first came across the definition, not necessarily the feeling, but the actual definition, I was in my master's program. I was sitting in the middle of my military history class, listening to all these people around me who seemed to have all of their shit together and understood what they were talking about. And they were going into such depth and detail in their discussions that I sat there in my chair screaming internally thinking, oh my fucking God, they have somehow let me into this class and I should not be here. How did I trick the admissions process? Similarly, that's how I felt when I got my first blog review of Rise. There's no way it can be as good as this person is saying. Maybe they're just being nice. Maybe they're just doing it because I was kind when I emailed them. Maybe they're doing it because they want people to actually send them books. And if they're destroying everyone's book, people are not going to send it to them. There was a million excuses. There was a million ways for me to say, well, these things that I am seeing, there is no way I am good enough. These, these validations I'm getting, they have to be a mistake. But the problem with imposter syndrome is when I got the opposite, when I would get a two star review, <laughs> That, that, yeah, that was right. Of course, that that person saw it. That person has to be it. All of the energy that I would put forth into taking down my own accomplishments, the energy I would put into trying to make sure that I knew that somehow I had tricked people into believing I was competent. I didn't spend that in trying to deflect any kind of criticism. I didn't dig deep into it. I just accepted it. And therein lies some of the problem. With imposter syndrome, you are more likely to accept the negative and less likely to accept the positive, at least in my case. But how can this overwhelming feeling of not being good enough, this, this need to be extremely self-critical, to 
indulge in your self-doubt? How can that impact your writing? First is going to be writer's block or the inability to write. You can sit there and say, what's the point? Why would you even try? Why would you try to write a book in the first place? Because there are so many other amazing books already. Or perhaps when you've already been writing, it can stop you from continuing. It's actually what happened to me personally when I was writing my sequel. I got over 100,000 words into that book and essentially almost talked myself out of continuing. I almost quit. I was considering throwing away the entire manuscript because I had told myself so many times that whatever I had written before was actually just a trick. Any good validation I had received was actually just a bunch of bullshit and that there's no point in me doing a second book because no one is going to like it and that I didn't even deserve to publish the first one. I had convinced myself that my writing was actually just really bad and any positive reviews I'd had were a mistake. And that's also how you can get into the next part, endless edits. If you are sitting there telling yourself that what you're writing is, is just not good enough, not good enough, no matter what, it's very easy to continuously go through the editing process until you're just take your manuscript and just twist and twist and twist until you wring out every single potential mistake, every single issue with a comma or period, or you just avoid publishing. You avoid sharing it because just, just, just one more edit, just one more draft, just one more time through Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid. You just need to do that one more thing because it's just, you have to keep going. You have to keep editing and you can get in this cycle of a perpetual edit, a perpetual draft where you will never actually finish. Now there is a saying that I have taken to heart here and there's it's really, I think, something that has been very important to me, especially with this perpetual editing process. Your book is not finished. Your book is released. The books that I have already published, I could go back into those books. I could find some grammatical issues. I could find things in the plot or the characterization that I would change. I, I know a few things in Rise that I would really like to change now. And actually, one of the detriments to being self-published you can do that if you are self-published you have control you can pull your manuscript you can make the edits i may have done it and then you can put it back out there it actually helps encourage this perpetual editing cycle but it's not just in the writing or inability to write phase once you've published it can hurt you there too in marketing if I come to you and say, oh, yeah, um, yeah, I, 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 I self-published this, this, um, this little story that, um, uh, I mean, yeah, like, it still needs some edits. It's kind of like about, about the revolution, um, but not really, um, it's, it's like there's, there's no magic, but it's, it's fantasy. Would you buy that? Would you would you be interested in buying that book? Would you be interested in that book for free? No, probably not. Because while I am doubting my own work, it's going to be very easy for you to doubt it too. If I, the author, am not confident in my own work, why would you be? Why would you waste your time? Imposter syndrome can sabotage your marketing effort. As an author, traditional published or self-published, you are going to need to sell your book and you're gonna to need to sell yourself. And to do that with imposter syndrome is difficult because you will always have this little voice in your head saying, well, no, you're not actually that good. And maybe you tricked everybody, but you have to find ways to overcome that. Or your pitch is going to sound like something that no one ever wants to buy or read. And I want to qualify here saying this is not about being egotistical or thinking yourself as the best author or best writer. It's simply thinking that the hard work you have put in is valuable and worth people's time and that your story is worth reading. The little voice is an asshole and it's being overly self-critical. Sometimes you need to just shut it up.
So this kind of shows how, as a writer, it can really self-sabotage you. It can keep you from writing, it can keep you in editing, or it can make it so you can't actually market the book once you finish it. So how are some ways that you can manage? Well, these are the ways that have worked for me. Little disclaimer here, this is just something that has worked for me as an author and as a YouTuber. And what works for me may not work for you, but I do at least hope that by seeing what I do, it at least gives you a springboard on how to tackle it yourself. First, acknowledge it. Acknowledge that imposter syndrome is a thing. It helps in so many ways to start understanding where your feelings are coming from and it may help you learn to address it and see what is a healthy critique of your work and what is self-sabotage and for me i like to question i like to ask questions of why how why do i feel this way how how did i come to this point and sometimes that leads into the next thing which is reminding yourself of your accomplishments and your hard work did you take a course? Did you read a book on writing? Did you watch YouTube videos or Skillshare on, on how to become a better author? Did you listen to an audiobook? Did you write a book? Have you won any awards? What have people that have read your book said about? It? Remember the accolades and the work you put in over the years. No matter where you are in your writing journey, whether you are just beginning or you are very far along, you will be able to look back and see, this is some of the stuff I have done to get to this point. Even if it's as simple as taking a couple classes in high school, or taking multiple classes in college, getting an MFA in creative writing, or doing it all yourself and learning through watching and reading. You have put in work. You have written things. And again, it's not stroking your ego to do this. It's literally just looking at what you have done and taking account for what time you have put in. And when that doesn't work, Look to others. Look to others that are you consider successful. There are many lists out there with celebrities and people who have achieved immense things that also struggle with imposter syndrome. People that you would never think do. It's one of those things that it is pretty prevalent. So take a look at that and see that it's not just you. You are not alone in feeling that way. I still struggle with imposter syndrome. In this video alone, I have told myself multiple times that I am not the authority. How can I give this advice? But I am at least an authority on self-doubt. So that's a thing. And last, something that has become absolutely essential to me. A strong external support system. And I'm not talking about people that are just going to tell you what you want to hear or tell you how great you are. I'm talking about people that you trust and that people that will understand when you are being overly self-critical and bring you back. If it weren't for my wife pulling me aside when I was about to toss, stand in the garbage, I may have completely quit writing just a couple years ago. And I had already done things at that point. I already published a book, but she was able to sit me down and talk me through it and tell me the good things and the bad things and tell me what I could do and how to go about it. She lifted me up when I needed her to. And I have friends that have been able to do the same thing. I have colleagues that are similar. Having people that will have those frank conversations with you is really essential. Look in the comment section here. People commenting here may be the, your next person that you can work with. Another author. Join a writer's group. So just take time and, and make those connections. Find those people that will support you and keep you going. Because like I have said in a previous video, we need your story. So please don't quit. Keep writing, keep getting better, keep striving to get your story out there, whatever it may be. So before we end this video, I have a little bit of homework for you. Starting today, if you have been calling yourself an aspiring author, an aspiring writer, drop the aspiring. If you write, you're a writer. You don't need anything in front of it. If you are self-published, drop the self. If you publish the book, you publish the book. The literal meaning of published is published. You might be surprised at just how much just doing something as simple as that changes your outlook. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope this helped you look a little bit deeper into imposter syndrome and what you may be feeling about your writing. 
and I hope that you can use this video as some inspiration to keep going and just keep writing. Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.